Today is Ukama Sunday here at Jackson Community Church. So, so the, the Ukama Sunday, for those that aren't familiar with our community, is a partnership with our sister church in the city of Mutare in Zimbabwe. We've had a very long standing relationship with them, and our entire state, our denomination in the state of New Hampshire, has an ongoing partnership with the churches in the nation of Zimbabwe. So it's not just our church, it's actually a very large partnership between all of the New Hampshire churches, or many of the New Hampshire churches, and the, I'm going to say hi, sorry, and the, the U.S. churches. And the, and the Zimbabwe churches. Um, so you'll see elements that have been shared with us from Zimbabwe today. You'll, if you can't see them, hear them. And um, we will be showing some photos uh, uh, over time of some of the adventures we've had with them. Jeanette has gone to Zimbabwe. Some representatives from the churches in Zimbabwe have visited us here in the U.S., and we've partnered on some projects together. So we'll, we'll show those briefly, but I'll describe them as well. And they'll be online afterwards if you can't see them right now because you're either dialed in on the phone or you're here in the church with us. And we actually have a pretty good number of people here in the church with us. This is a big crowd for us. I think we've got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people in the church all at the same time. That's a lot of folks. So I'm going to, if you're not already in gallery view, feel free to join in gallery view and unmute yourselves. And before we start the service, feel free to like wave at each other and say hello. Just a quick greeting. And I'm going to spin the computer around if I can so that if you look in my little box, you can sort of see, you want to wave? Everybody want to wave here in the church? Oh, I'm, I'm not. All right. Yep, you lost it. And you get pretty good close-ups of Alan and I during the service, so we, we won't burden you with more close-ups than you need to have of us. But um, feel free to, you guys, to unmute and say hi. Huh? Claire. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Hello, Jackson. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good, morning. good to see Claire. Yeah, Claire. Hi. Yay! Good to see everybody else too. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We were we were um, muted. Um, my sound was muted. So sorry. I <laughs> did. You guys get to hear me talk about Zimbabwe, or was I just talking to myself? Did you hear that whole thing? We heard you. Okay. Yeah. But suddenly, I was muted. Like this is getting more excited by the minute. I don't think I muted myself, but maybe I did. Okay. So at this point, um, that's my announcement for the life of the church. Next week, we will be having a couple of special presentations during the course of the service. Um, David and Ginger Perkins sat down with me, and we're going to have a conversation that we'll share with you on Sunday, November 1st, about voting as an act of faith. And then we have a presentation, a guest presentation by Tony DeLuca. So we're going to have some of our own members of the church helping us meditate on our political selves and, and how we enact our values through the privilege and the responsibility of voting. So that should be a really special Sunday as well. So we look forward to your presence when we have these kinds of conversations. Mind you, we are, we are doing this in a nonpartisan way. We are not you know, directing where or how you vote, simply the act of being an active part of our governance is what we are highlighting as our responsibility and our privilege as people of faith. And I think when you see today and hear from the people in Zimbabwe, it will help you appreciate even more the importance of having a voice in the way that we are governed. Um, because everything that we have here is so 
so blessed and abundant, and you can see sometimes when you have a perspective of another partner church living in a different way, just exactly what that might look like. Are there any other announcements for the life of the church of the community? Alan has an announcement. We're, we're using the microphones in the church, so if anybody speaks today during the service, we're going to ask you to try to use one of the mics so that everybody can um, hear you. As you can see on Zoom here, I'm, I'm here. So, um, But if you have any prayers or announcements um, right now, we have a mic here and a camera here, so that way the people on Zoom can see you as well. So I'm kind of speaking to both sides right now. So um, if you do want to be heard and be on Zoom, this is a way you can do it if you're in the sanctuary. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alan. Okay, and do we have any now the life of the church right now? You're probably going to have to unmute yourself and say it if you do, because I'm trying to scan everybody, but I may not see you. Oh, okay, I don't see any hands in the church, uh, and I don't see any raised hands here. Um, okay, then we're going to move into our worship. And I'm going to ask Alan to please offer us some center music. Alan for his centering music and now I'm going to move us into prayer so I would ask that at this time if you have any prayer requests and we start with concerns and then we move to celebration so if you have any prayer requests we would love to hear from you if there are ones that you can share out loud. We're going to start in the sanctuary and see if there are any here that we want to raise up. Shall we raise up Father Steve? Um, each week, Alan asks us to pray for Father Steve, who's away with his family, taking care of them during this time. Um, any other prayer requests here in the church? Okay. Wendy's got one. So Wendy's, Wendy's kind of, she's talking about gratitude for the presence and the love of family and friends. And we're going to pop that into our celebration category and revisit that um, prayer for sure. Because um, Wendy's sister-in-law has been here from Italy celebrating her 90th birthday. So that's an important uh, milestone that they have been fortunate enough to be able to celebrate in person. Here in the world of Zoom, if you have a prayer of concern that you wish to raise up, please unmute yourself and go ahead and share it. And it looks like Judy and Bill might have one. Yes, tomorrow is my surgery, my hip replacement surgery in the morning. Okay, so we have Judy's got a hip replacement and we know that Sue just went through a hip replacement. Um, so we're having new joints left and right here. If it's not a shoulder or a knee, it's apparently it's a, a hip. Um, okay. So prayers of, prayers of success for you. And Sandra? Uh, Sandra, you're muted. And then Claire after. Hello. So, yep. Hi. Sandra, go ahead. Um, prayers for our friend Paula, who had open heart surgery on Friday and is now suffering from complications. Okay, so prayers of, of 
hope for healing for Paula, who had open heart surgery and is now having complications from that surgery. And Claire, I saw that you were unmuted, and I would like to honor your um, prayer that you'd like to share with us. Great. Um, love to have prayers from my brother, who is has some weird... Uh, you cut out, a, uh, you, Claire, you, you, un, you muted again. Unmute yourself and try again. There ah, go. technology, you gotta love it. Uh, yes. <laughs> I wanted um, a prayers for my brother. He um, has some weird things going on with the veins in his legs and it's pretty painful and he has some open sores and he went to the doctor yesterday and he said, well, the good news is we'll probably name this after you once we figure out what's going on with wow. it. Wow. So... <laughs> So I don't know if it's a really good thing, but if we can get some prayers so so his legs are better somehow, that would be great. <laughs> and do you have, um, what's oh, his name? His name is Bill. Bill. Bill Long. Bill Long. The best brother, one of the best brothers in the world. One of the best brothers in the world, Bill Long, needs prayers for his legs. Bill. 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 Phil. Phil. P-H-I-L. That's it. Um, Sorry. Yeah. Bad. Bad um, Phil needs prayers for the veins in his legs for healing for the skin in his legs and um perhaps for them to even sort of figure out how to respond to what's going on because they think they might have to name it after him so that's a little too exciting can you hear me um, this is claire can you say anything about the fires in california oh yes arden go ahead you go ahead arden well, I just wanted to say I am so grateful for Sue's incredible recovery from a hip, re hip um, problem. And uh, I think they're tying her down to keep her from running around doing the marathon. I, I agree with you. I was there yesterday and I don't think she's uh, um, nearly taking as much rest as she's supposed to, but when does she ever? <laughs> Yeah. Um, Other I just <laughs> thank you, Art. Thank you. So gratitude for Sue's healing as well. Do we have any other prayers of concern out in Zoom that you want to specifically name? I'm scanning just to make sure I'm not missing anybody. I hope I'm not. Okay. Let's move to celebration. And then we will pray together. Are there any prayers of celebration this week? I know that we last week was Kevin's 50th birthday, right? So that was a that was a milestone. We've had a few people have some milestones in the past week. Um, we also have upcoming anniversaries. I'm just going to out David and Ginger and say that next Sunday will be their 40th. So we'll probably be saying happy anniversary to them next week. And... Any other anniversaries in the church sanctuary and the birthday of your sister-in-law? Wendy, what's your, your sister-in-law's name, please? Ruth. Ruth. Okay, so Ruth turned 90 this week, and she came from Italy to celebrate with uh, John and Wendy's family. Are there any other milestones or celebrations out here in Zoom that you want to share? Certainly Deanna's wedding. Here she is with us, but we know she was partying a week ago with her family enjoying the reunion that that they got to ha all have together. So one of the things that um, the fire I was on, they, um, they I, last week they, they got it out and this was the fire that was right next to um, the P paradise. You know, a couple of years ago, this town uh, yeah. burned to the ground and so there was a fire again that was right near the town and they stopped it from uh, burning the town again. So that's a really cool thing. Wow. So, and Sandy, Sandy's got a celebration. I'm just going to say, oh no, she doesn't. <laughs> she's just going, you hoo Woohoo. Um, so just for anybody that doesn't know, Claire has been, I mean, you, you would have to describe in more detail what it is you do, Claire, but she's been supporting responses to the fires in California. So when she's telling you about these fires, she's talking about fires on the ground in California. And we had a few people affected by the one that touched Paradise last year because I think Bob Santoro was out there at that time and I think he was volunteering to help recover from it. <clears throat> I'm not sure, but I think I've got that right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, he was. Yeah. And um, yeah, there's lots of the fires are still going, but um, so a little prayer, maybe a little rain dance or something would be helpful because <laughs> they totally need rain out there. <laughs> okay, we're going to keep some prayers for rain dances. Um, anybody else have a prayer of celebration in Zoom? Okay, then I'm going to ask us to pray together. Oh, holy God, today is Kama Sunday, which is the day that we ask to have your support to help us remember that we are all connected, that we are all children of God, that the very meaning of Yukama is to find connection through relationship and to recognize the light of God, the love of God, the sacredness of human life in each other's presence in our lives, and that our identity is shaped by our connection to community. We lift up the life with celebration of Kevin and Ruth who are happily coming to a milestone or, or meaningfully coming to milestones. And we think with concern of Phil and his need for healing and Paula and her need for healing in the wake of open heart surgery for Bill, I'm sorry, for Phil's you know, to figure out what's going on for Phil. With gratitude for those surgery, hope of healing for people. We think of the bodies and the communities of those we know and love, um, people who are living right now with a cancer diagnosis or a mental health diagnosis or Alzheimer's, or diabetes, or there are so many conditions. Some are named, some are not named, some are resolvable, and some are life-altering in perpetuity. And we are helping to uphold people that may be understanding how to live in a new way for the river of loss. And this is the place of hope that we know that we are together, that we come together to lift up these prayers. And not only do we lift up our own prayers, but we lift up the presence of the Chicago church in our lives and that we have deliberately chosen to become connected and partnered with other faith communities in other parts of the world that we may see your light and your love reflected there too. We offer you now our words of prayer as you taught us to pray, saying the Lord's Prayer, and I would ask if you're in Zoom that you would unmute now so that we can hear you here and join in solidarity in prayer. The Shona words are on the right, but we're only going to say the English words. So let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven. hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Be done. On earth, earth is in heaven. 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 Give us this day, 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 day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, glory, forever. Amen. Now, I we did pretty well, actually, praying together. If we just do a little bit of pacing, we're all right. And now if you want to remute yourselves, that would be awesome. We want to make sure we don't um, get any surprises. And we're now going to hear a special message from the Chikanga Church. I'm just going to say up front, they just recorded this for us this morning, right, um, right after their worship service. They did it outside. It can be a little bit hard to understand it because there's a lot of wind. I will give you the highlights of what they're saying, but just know that what you're seeing on the video are several of the leaders of the church, including their minister, Reverend Liberty Majda, and that later in the service, we will, or at, at some point in the service, we're also going to have their music, which they also shared. So 
let us um, be attentive to this greeting that the Chikanga Church sent to us just this morning. I, Reverend Lippert Mahal, United Church of Christ in Zimbabwe, uh, it is a church at Chikanga, Moses Z. would like to send our greetings to you on behalf of the whole church and on my own behalf of the family. We greet you uh, in the name of our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hi, Jessica. The best friend of Chicago, the United States of Christ in Zimbabwe, this is it. I want to greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I am representing Chicago, the United States of Christ in Zimbabwe. I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. We are happy. We are very grateful. Thank you. May the Lord bless you. Be blessed in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Uh, I send my warm greetings to Jetson Community Church. Be blessed. Continue to be united with us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I, Clarice Mnipa, as a representative of Ruazano Chikanga Church, would like to greet you from Jackson Church. We are happy. We love you all. We will be blessed always in Jesus' name. Amen. I, Mrs. Jamie Temeri, the Vice President of Chikanga Church of Christ, of the greeting that we just heard from our Chikanga Church partners, greetings from Reverend Liberty Majda from the UCCZ. They send their greetings on behalf of the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. They greet you in that name. And then Jessica, who is one of the leaders of the church, wanted to greet us all in the name of the Lord. And she said, we are happy. We are grateful. We thank you. Be blessed in the mighty name of the Lord. One of the leaders of the men's fellowship sent warm greetings to Jackson Community Church. And he asked that we would be blessed and continue to be united with Chikanga Church in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Gladys, who's the president of a group I believe called Watson. I may be getting the name just pronounced slightly wrongly, but uh, they greet us, um, they are happy, and they love us all 
and they asked that we should be blessed. And then another one of the women whose name I couldn't catch said, we love all of you. Um, love from all of us. We want to say thank you and may the Lord bless you. Stay blessed and we appreciate your presence. So that's the greeting that they recorded after their uh, gathering this morning. You could see that they were in their older building still um, celebrating as they build their new building and that there are a lot more of that congregation than there are of us, I think. They kind of beat us on the, like, the size of their choir and stuff like that, and they definitely have it all over us in the dancing department. <laughs> um, but that's one of the beauties of being partnered with different communities is that we have different styles. So just so you all know, we sent to their church one of the songs that our choir had prepared. We sent the I Believe link because that was one of our earliest and I think still one of my favorite songs that the choir prepared together. And then um, I recorded a greeting to play to the church um, yesterday. I recorded it here from all of us because our worship service happens after their worship service. So rather than miss out on the whole opportunity, we sent them a, an anticipatory greeting, but they got to do it after their worship. So we are grateful for their presence. I'm going to turn us now to scripture, and we are going to continue reading from the epistles of Paul, which we've been studying for several weeks. And so at this time, we will be looking at Titus. And I will read that for you. And this is just a very small excerpt. And I'm going to explain to you why we focused on this one. From Titus chapter 2, verses 2 through 8. But as for you, teach what is consistent with sound doctrine. Tell the older men to be temperate, serious, prudent, and sound in faith, in love, and in endurance. Likewise, tell the older women to be reverent in behavior so that they may encourage the young women. Likewise, urge the younger men to be self-controlled. Show yourself in all respects a model of good works and in your teaching show integrity, gravity, and sound speech. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, despicable and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. So ends the reading. And I would ask you now to pray with me as we prepare to reflect on both that passage and our partnership with the Ukama Church. O holy God, May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I pulled from that letter that written by Paul to an early Christian community, the specific passages that we just read and that some of you are seeing on the screen, because Unlike many of Paul's letters that were written to the entire community and they were supposed to be read out loud to the whole church because he was talking to the whole church, this letter is intended for the church leaders only. Titus was a very close follower of Paul and he had been sent to Crete and there he established the early Christian church in Crete and he was commissioned as a bishop in that church. I mean, it's pretty early days, but they're already starting to create officers and hierarchies about how they organize and operate as small but vital faith communities. So he's talking to Titus about how to cultivate leadership 
in the church. And he's talking about the kind of characteristics that you want to look for in your leaders. Um, there are some parts of these passages I did not share with you because where it says, you know, ask the older women to be reverent, it then goes on to say, tell them not to gossip and tell them to be submissive to their husbands and some things like that. Um, we always have to be aware that these letters were written in the context of their times and what was considered admirable behavior at that time might not be the best way to cultivate or not the only way to cultivate our leaders or, or recognize honorable characteristics now, right? So we, we focus on the first part of the sentences that talk about to ask and to instruct the people to be reverent, to be thoughtful in the way that they live and love and practice their faith. And also appreciate that he was trying to help build up a remote church in a very far off place. And the parallels between what he's instructing this little church on the island of Crete to do when they are surrounded by a culture that worships other gods, you know, it's the Roman culture, but it also had the ancient Minoan civilization presence. So the ruins of past religions are all around them, and they're trying to create a foothold for what their idea of love means. And we're talking about our partnership with this little church, this not so little church in Zimbabwe in the city of Mutare. It's the third largest city in the nation of Zimbabwe. And Chris is going to help us. We're gonna put up some images that we pulled from our records of the travels that we've done back and forth between Zimbabwe, but we're going to start with the meaning of Yukama so that we can all start on the same page and then think about how the words of Paul resonate even now between these two churches. Yukama, this is from the commentaries that I found about Yukama. It's the ethic of Yukama in the Shona language that's used to denote relatedness and interrelatedness. And it implies that life is an interconnected whole. The ultimate well being of the individual cannot be separated from connection to the well being of others. For us to be well and whole, we must focus on the well being of other people, other communities other nations, and other beings, and our whole environment. It implies all of that. It's through kinship or relatedness that the individual's actions will positively or negatively affect both now and the future. It's tied to the Bantu word Ubuntu, which more people may be familiar with. It's another African term and concept that means humanity and is often translated as I am because we are or humanity towards others, which again implies this interconnectedness, right? People in the ideal ethical framework of Ukama and Zimbabwe find their identity through connection, not through individuality, but through community. Community is a huge concept across multiple African national cultural landscapes. That's why I gave you two words, Ukama and Ubuntu. And frequently they're picked up and used in other places to try to help us think in a way that our culture does not always push us to think. And now I wanna show you some images of some of the partnerships that we have shared together Yep, there we go. And I'll describe for all of you guys what we're seeing. Um, I don't even, Jeanette might even be able to weigh in and tell me when the partnership between New Hampshire and Zimbabwe began, but I believe it was in the 80s or 90s. It's been going for a long time, and we've, we've had our relationship for quite a while. So we have a couple of images up on the screen right now of groupings of Americans and Zimbabwe citizens who had gone back and forth in their travels together. 
And then Jeanette, in 2010, a member of our church, went with the overall New Hampshire delegation to Zimbabwe, and she got to meet several of the communities there. Now, when we started our partnership with Zimbabwe, they were a very wealthy nation. They are very rich in natural resources. And culturally, with educationally, uh, and economically, we were on equal footings. Since that time, through very corrupt governance, you know, a general that, or a president that never relinquished his power, and then the one who came after him, who then ha has been equally as corrupt, they, they basically seized a lot of the national um, resources and started to sell them off to corporations and really bankrupted, if you will, or, or stole from Zimbabwe its own wealth and outsourced it to other places without letting that become a source of income for the local communities. And so our relationship now is very different. But one of the things that we need to always remember is that there is wealth of spiritual resourcefulness and resilience that we are witnessing through the Chikanga Church in the city of Mutare. You guys saw them dancing and singing in a wooden structure, but what the folks in the sanctuary maybe didn't see is that we've been working with them year by year to send resources, and they are building the largest masonry, well, the largest footprint building um, UCC church in the entire nation right now. The walls are all up, parts of the roof are up, and by, by brick, just like, you know, like the song says, they are building up the physical church, but meanwhile, even in the middle of COVID, they have been building up their own community. One of the things that we did with them was this year we allocated, in addition to building resources, mission resources that were sent to their church so that they could donate it to serve their community in the best possible way during this time because there was food insecurity. There was almost nothing on the shelves. And had we waited, they wouldn't even have been able to acquire anything because everything would have been gone. They still had to get special permission, dispensation from the government to even send people out to purchase the food that was available. And they got these really big sacks of grain and containers of oil so that people could at least make the basics of food for themselves and their families and their neighbors. That's one of the partnerships that our church has conducted specifically with the Chikanga Church, in addition to building their physical structure. But they spiritually, emotionally, and psychologically, somebody at the 8 o'clock service this morning wondered how, like, I mean, where's their income coming from? Like, how are they even doing this, right? And their income, they have some people that are continuing to be able to work because they are working for um, foreign companies that still have money flowing in or they work for what are considered essential jobs in the gov paid for by the government. But how do they keep going on a spiritual, energy, emotional, psychological level? They do that because they are people of faith. And if they give up and they don't believe in ukama, everything devolves. And we know that they're, they, they've been using a barter system and trading for everything. So there's a lot of stuff that isn't even on the books. They've been creative and they've started trading services when they didn't have, they've been trading personal, they've been trading everything and still trying to maintain the integrity of their lifestyle and their community. And Apparently, just the building of this church has given a sense of purpose to a lot of people, not just the members of the church, but other people around them are, are helping with the labor of building because it's given people a sense of hope that in the middle of this devastation, something is rising, and these people still believe that they can be this beacon of light and hope in their community. And in part, that wouldn't be possible without the partnership with us, but I suspect they'd figure out a way to do it anyway. 
Um, and if they had to dance in the open, they'd be doing that and singing the praise of God. But they are living and modeling in the way that Paul suggested that people become leaders in their community with reverence for faith and each life and all life and great love. And I think that partnership and their example to us regardless of whether they could send us, uh, you know, money, they send us handmade gifts, artistry, they send us their greetings, they send us their music, and they hold up to us in the way that they can do right now in these times. An example that it would be so easy to not know existed or to set aside or forget, but because we have this deliberate Ukama partnership, we're reminded about how people are getting by and more than getting by thriving in other parts of the world right now. And so the Ukama partnership for us and its importance is to remind us that we're connected not just to the people up the mountain road or down Route 16, or maybe across the main border down in Massachusetts, or you know where Claire has compatriots that are fighting fires, not just in our own nation and our own landscape, but across the waters in other parts of the world. And all of us, one way or another, are being affected by not just global pandemics, but by political division, oppression that makes anything that we think is happening in our nation seem quite peaceful and stable by comparison because if you criticize the government it's possible you'll disappear and you'll be taken out of your own life and your family's life and you won't come back in Zimbabwe so they're very careful about how they tell us what's happening so I just you know I just want to lift up for us all of us what the Okama partnership means to all of us and give thanks for it and say that the words of Paul about how we choose our leaders and how we continue to be a light in the earliest of times or right now are equally relevant. And so we give thanks and we see the light of God and the face of God in each one of you, the nine of us that showed up in the sanctuary and the many of you that came to Zoom and our brothers and sisters in Zimbabwe and in other parts of the world. We give thanks. Thanks be to God. And I'm going to move us now to our offering. And we're going to just, we'll play a little bit of music and do our usual reminder that um, there's a, there's an offer, a donation basket when you're in the front of the church. So if you physically come to the church, there are baskets for you to put a, an offering into. And if you are out in Zoom, then we invite you to pause and add your weekly donation to wherever you might be tucking your envelope or to remember to go online and make your contribution at jxncc.org or to pop it in the mail, whatever is good, because we are, too are being a beacon of light and vitality. Church did not stop because COVID hit or because politics got heated up or because people want to change our society. Church is digging in and we are in the middle of it because like our Lord who lived in political, economic, social times, so do we. And we are a light in the middle of all of these things. And so your help is what allows us to stay that strong and vital part of a fabric of churches that make a difference in this world even now and we're going to presume that you have now shared a donation and we're going to place up on the screen a prayer of dedication that comes also from zimbabwe and here are the words written by reverend farai sharisa god of all good our gifts we bring to you May they be multiplied and blessed as the fish and the loaves were. Little though our offering is, but meaningful in love may it be. May they be received as tokens of our love. Amen. 
And the final couple of things we're going to do today may be slightly challenging, but could be fun. We are going to revisit a song called Tinotenda Yesu, which we did together as a church a year ago during our Ukama. At the time, we were allowed to have brunch church, so it was wicked fun. We were eating and singing together, um, things we can't quite do right now. But we're going to do the singing part together. Zoom folks can stay. Um, well, you guys can sing in your home. And I'm sorry, for the people in the sanctuary, you can't sing. We can't do congregational singing. You can listen to how well or, or how enthusiastically, anyway, we get through this song. Um, we have a recording underneath it to help you. So Alan doesn't have to suddenly learn it or anything. And we're going to put the words up on the screen. And it's really simple. It's Tinotenda Yesu, Tinotenda Yesu, Tinotenda Yesu, Alleluia, Amen. Followed by thank you, Jesus, amen. Thank you, Jesus, amen. Thank you, Jesus, amen. This is a Shona song. So this is a song from Zimbabwe to again sort of bind us in solidarity with our brothers and sisters. So let's uh, listen and you can meet yourself and try. Now, this is a part of our service that Reverend Gail doesn't really know about. She's probably wondering why there's so many people in the sanctuary today. Um, and besides the fact that it's delightful to be here, this is Clergy Appreciation Month in the United Church of Christ. And we thought, who better? Who better to be appreciated than our Reverend Gail? So we have three of our deacons here today. Wendy is presenting some beautiful flowers to Gail from all of us. So I'm facing the other way since uh, Alan put up this wonderful new, uh, new screen and microphone. But Gail, I think Gail knows every day that we appreciate her, but especially at Clergy Appreciation Month. Um, and we have uh, a responsive reading that will be up on your screen for those on Zoom. And this is um, a prayer that Tish Hanlon, one of our deacons, put together and we hope that you'll, um, I will read the leader part and if everyone at home can unmute and contribute to the all sections, as well as our two deacons that are here in church will say this too. Hopefully you'll all hear it. So anyway. Okay, this is a responsive prayer in celebration of our minister. Our Jackson Church community would like to express our deepest gratitude for our minister, Reverend Gail Pomeroy, doctor. <laughs> we are a stronger church because of her faith, her passion, and her commitment to fellowship. We, we give all her thanks to and all Reverend, Reverend Gail, our great God, our hearts. hearts. Bless Reverend Gail's family, her husband, Chris, and daughter, Sarah, and son-in-law, Nehru, for their loving support of her ministry, a ministry that demands tireless commitment and self-sacrifice, changes of plans and calls at all hours. We, we ask, ask that, that, that you bless the family, family the whole, the whole the whole the life, and the light of, the light of God's love. love. Bless Reverend Gail and all spiritual and community leaders who promote unity and love, lead by example, who understand that through courageous conversations Can't and listen. random and deliberate acts of kindness, our it's community and our world 
is a kinder and more inclusive home to all of God's children. Because that's all really well, it is. Lord, yeah. hear our prayers. Hear our community. Hear our prayers. Hear the kindness of our friends. Hear 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 our Bless this space and virtual space between us brought on by the COVID pandemic. We fill this blessed space with our prayer concerns, our sorrows and our joys. We are grateful too for the music that fills this space and are mindful of the wonders of the technology that make this virtual worship a reality. We, we give, give thanks for connection in the space we are sharing in the time, in the time of social distance and we are to those who touch the world to bring, to bring us together, together. together. and we remind us that we are one kind of people in fellowship. We pray so that our words may be lifted up in God's holy light. Please join me in the unison blessing. Oh, Holy One. We ask yes. that you watch yes. over Reverend Gail as she moves she through her through days. days. Holy One, we ask you to her as she tends to the sick and the lonely. lonely. Watch over her as she watches over her. her. She, she unions, celebrates unions, unions, celebrates unions, be present, and to her always, always and remind her of the importance of self care and preservation. And preservation, the, the light, the mountains, the, 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 the wild rivers, rivers of our valley, the strength of her strength, strength, strength solace, and solace, and solace, and solace, and solace in her days. <laughs> and now we have a prayer for clergy appreciation month that Laurie will read, and you can all you'll be able to see it on your screen and listen as Laurie reads the words. Good Lori. morning. That was really well done by our dear friend Meg. This is a prayer for Clergy Appreciation Month. God, grant clergy the serenity to accept churches and the people in them the way they really are. The courage to challenge them every week and pray for them every day. And wisdom that's based in nimble and resilient love. Live streaming one worship at a time. Zooming one meeting, one visit, one wedding or funeral at a time, absorbing anxieties of this coronavirus season around illness, isolation, education, financial well being, and the daily risks of essential workers and medical personnel while still holding a course for peace. Taking on, as Jesus did, the fearsome realities of political life, believing in reconciliation in spite of divisiveness, speaking the names and never surrendering truth. Let those clergy be reasonably happy in this pandemic autumn, for you are the source of miracles and able to point others to both daily joy and eternal grace. Amen. Thank you. So we want to thank Gail and everybody at home. If you'd like to unmute and you can say yay, amen, or clap your hands. I understand the word. Amen. Yeah. Yay. Word. God bless you, Gail. We love you. I understand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you are, you are blessed. <laughs> <laughs> My husband helped keep that secret, I'm guessing. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, thank God for Chris. I, I I was crying over here. Sorry, you guys. Thank you. That was beautiful and totally a surprise. I didn't even know it was clergy appreciation month. <laughs> thank you so much. Wow. You deacons and everybody, everybody, thank you. Thank you so much. And Tish for writing this very special prayer that was unique to our church. Yeah, we, we, we tend to like have our own brand of worship, right? <laughs> we never just use the UCC version of things. So thank you. Wow. Um, I think that's another beautiful expression of Yukama, right? Like our own community. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't think we pause and celebrate our, our own community. 
and each one of us, and I'm just going to say there's the UCC belief is that all people are ministers, and truly that is how we've gotten through so much of what's happening right now because no one person, no minister, no music minister, no one deacon could possibly run around and take care of all of the neighbors and friends who have been feeling cut off or isolated right now. And so it has been the, the communal love of many neighbors and friends giving rides, uh, bringing meals, visiting people even in the hospital, taking people to very long distance medical care, bringing them the newspaper, calling, writing notes, all the different things that people have done in their own capacity to love each other and keep each other connected. Just, you know, this is, it takes a village to hold up a village in these times. Um, so thank you. And may I just say that whatever gifts you find in me, it's because you're giving them back and they are flow flowing back out. So, you know, it takes all of you to help make what we're doing as a church possible. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> four, four years, four, coming up on four years. Yeah. And in fact, I think like next week is sort of my anniversary of showing up here. Um, and who knew we'd be doing this in our fourth year, like COVID. But um, you know, uh, yeah, I showed up right on the eve of uh, the first, uh, the last political election. So it's been just one cycle of a presidency and world, world pandemics and fires and everything else and all the amazing things that have happened. Um, I'm going to suggest that we now all do our benediction together. Again, sorry, Sanctuary, for the nine people that were brave enough to show up in the church today. You don't get to sing, but everybody else can sing. Um, so let's, let's move to our benediction, which Chris will put up with music for us. Alan to play a little transitional music and then if you want to stay and just chit chat by zoom or in person you may for a few minutes or if you need to head on to the rest of your day um, Alan will play you out right now or later mm -hmm. 